Hi, this is Christian. Welcome to another episode of Minimal Cast. This is the Increased Developer Productivity series I'm doing. Now, in this episode, this is going to be a great episode, even if you're sort of a veteran of Tmux, using Tmux as your development tool. I'm going to go over the eLinks console based browser. And this tool, when leveraged properly, is going to reduce your context switching. Going out to the GUI based browser, you know, you see a tab, uh, your Twitter timeline, or whatever, uh, you know, some sort of sports in, a, in one of the tabs, you might go down this great rabbit trail and lose your focus. So uh, you, using a console based browser, you can reduce that context switching by staying in Tmux to do relatively simple searches. Now. I'll go over shortly here on how I use Tmux and how I think you should use Tmux also. So follow along in this episode and I'll be right back. If you notice in my Tmux starter templates episode, I went over eLinks a little bit there and that's part of my starter template because that's how important the eLinks uh, window is for me. Let me also open now a an existing session. Okay, here I'm in an existing session. Here's some of the standard windows I usually have open that are part of that starter template that I just mentioned. And in my fifth window, usually my fifth window, I like to have the windows the same too, by the way. It uh, gets your muscle memory correct as uh, you switch over to these windows. But anyway, here I'm at the eLakes window right now, my fifth window again. On the left side here, I already have a web page open. Now I'm going to close out of eLinks just to go over some real basic stuff. I just hit the Q key there and I'm going to close out. Um, actually, it closed both panes. Let me open up another pane there. Um, I think it's just sort of something with the template. Like if you start up a window with a template with two panes and you close one of the programs um, you opened during that Tmux starter template, both panes closed. But anyway, um, now I installed eLinks using Brew. I have a, uh, a little blog post on what I did to change the Brew recipe, but it was like two years ago or something. So I don't want to go over installing eLinks for your different environment for, for Linux or for OS X, but for OS X, I use Brew and I have a, a link which I'll include in the blog post about uh, what I had to do for the brew recipe. But to start eLinks, once it's going, I use eLinks no connect. And the reason I use no connect is because if I make changes to my eLinks um, configuration file, then I can um, get those changes anew. And eLinks no connect is a way to do that. Now eLinks works in a similar way that Tmux does, is that there's a main eLinks server, and then you make little uh, client connections to that eLinks server. So by doing no connect, you're not connecting to the eLinks server. And that makes it easier to get changes from your configuration file, which I'm gonna go over um, right here next. So let me start up eLinks that way. Uh, it comes up here, we're here with this default page. And let me dive into the configuration file because it's just uh, so important to leverage some of these configuration files before even getting started with Tmux. And my configuration files on the home directory, elinks, it's elinks.conf. And I'm going to, let's make this right pane bigger. Now, it, right off the bat, it has this, you're gonna see these rewrite protocols and these are, again, very fundamental to leveraging uh, e-links uh, to increase your productivity because you primarily want to use e-links to look up documentation, API stuff. It's fine for general searches too. Um, I, I found that if I need to look more in depth, I like to go to the GUI browser. If I'm going to be doing a lot of scrolling and looking around and but if I kind of know what the, what the uh, thing is I'm looking for, I'll do a general Google search too. 
So that's what these protocols um, do. They, they help you, uh, give you shortcuts uh, for searches. Now, this is one I use all the time. This is just um, what's called a smart rewrite. And it just by doing the G command, I can do a, a Google search. Let me demonstrate that. Oops. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to this main screen. Now, to get this main screen, you just hit the O command. And uh, this comes up when you first start Elinks, but uh, to hit when you hit the O command, you'll also get it. So let's just say I did G, I can do Ruby Array. So that's gonna do a Google search uh, for Ruby Array. All right, and then I'll get my results. Now I have, for when I'm in the screen here, let me make this screen bigger. Okay, so I'm in those results for Ruby Array. Now I'm using the Vim key, so I'm using J and K, and those bindings I have set up also into the eLinks configure file. Let me go over there. And I'm gonna make this screen bigger again. Okay, so down here I have some bindings for moving around and you see J and K for scrolling up and down uh, the, the, the page there. So I'm gonna go now back to this window. Let's even it up. Okay, actually let's make it wider here. Okay, now you see it doesn't look that great. You know, this is a console-based browser. And one of the things, you, you see a little bit of uh, boldness in what are the links. So if I wanted to look actually at this link, what I can do is I'm gonna hit the number sign, slash, and I'm gonna type class. So that's gonna search the page <clears throat> and find, find that first class link. So then I can hit the enter key, which I'll do now. And hit it, hit it twice. Yeah, sometimes you got to hit it twice. So now I'm into that search result. So I'm looking up the Ruby array, all the uh, methods that are in Ruby array. And if I wanted to take a look at delete at, again, I can hit the number sign slash start typing delete at. Oops. Okay, at. So that'll get me to, and I can toggle the source of that. I'm using the J and K key, and it, it just opened up the source. That's what that, that's the C code there for Ruby array delete at. But then I'm looking further down on how to use delete at here. Back over to the configuration file and look at some other, some of these shortcuts. I'm gonna go back to the configuration file. So um, I have many shortcuts, you'll have a link to them. But uh, you know, here's one for looking up Wikipedia stuff. You wanna do a Wikipedia search. Um, there's a, I use this a lot, this is the, uh, Thesaurus, uh, WordNick. Uh, this is one I also use a lot, Big Huge Labs has a Thesaurus. Uh, so, it, for example, like when I'm trying to find some different words when, when writing a post, you want to, it's great to use a thesaurus. So, um, let me go back into uh, this pane over here. And I'm going to hit the zero or the O to get the URL. So, let's just say uh, I do TH is the shortcut and... I want to look up some alternatives to leverage. So it's great. So I'm going to go back to my code or what I'm writing here uh, to, to in pane one. My my this is code in this case, but uh, then I can go back to eLinks by hitting uh, the prefix um, capital L key goes to the last window, and I can see here my uh, options here from the thesaurus. And let me go back and look at some more here. Uh, some are documentation for Ruby. 
I can do RB, then like I how I just did in with the Google search, Ruby array, I can just do RB array. That goes right to the Ruby doc and 193 in that case. Here is uh, the Mozilla developer site. So I can do an uh, MDN search. Now those are smart, what are called smart read writes. So that's your sending in a value and you can see at the um, end here, this is just like a URL string, a get URL string. And this, this is the code that gets replaced here with your search. That's why it's called a small, smart rewrite. Now a dumb rewrite is where it's just a, a hard link and they're called rewrite dumb there. Uh, that's a hard link to something that doesn't require a search. Here's one actually, my first one here. I call it my Vim. So I have a Google Doc. It's actually a blog post too about the sh uh, a cheat sheet for Vim that I use, and uh, I go to that quite regularly. So I just set it up as a public uh, brow uh, having public viewable rights from Google Docs, and I can here go to the URL again. I hit lowercase o and I just type in my vim and that goes to my vim shortcuts let's make that bigger and I can just quickly browse down for my shortcuts again I can use the search key which is going to be the numeric sign slash and I can look for maybe surround.vim shortcuts so I don't have to go out to the full GUI browser here. I'm just staying within Tmux, leveraging e-links uh, to get the job done, to stay focused, uh, not, again, going out to the, the GUI browser and getting caught up into a rabbit trail stuff. So that's dumb rewrites. And there's other items, bind keys, that I've uh, set up here. I encourage you to, to look at those. Things like reloading the page, um, getting, you know, this is going to the URL, that, that lowercase O, which I've already showed. But if you go uppercase O, then you can show the current URL. Like, like I'm gonna hit uppercase O right now, and that would actually give the full URL. There, You can't see it there. This is a, quite a long one, um, but uh, quit over here to close a, a tab and to open a, a new tab, by the way, is I'm gonna hit the escape key. This will get that window away and hit the escape key when you're kind of lost in e-links that kind of uh, exits out of what you're in right now. But to open a new tab, I have set up for T. So lowercase T will open a new tab. So it's asking for the URL. So we go back to uh, Ruby hash here. Now open up that search into a new URL. And to go back to um, another tab. So if you, you look down in this um, the bottom of the screen here, you will see the MyVim cheat, cheat sheet and also the new search that I'm in. So I got two tabs open. So hey, I'm back. I'm gonna end this screencast right here. I really don't wanna go over 15 minutes and this gives you a good overview to get started anyway. And then I'm gonna have a part two where I just finish up, go over some more of the features that I that I do use. Uh, but uh, I'm gonna keep this one a little shorter and I hope you start to see too how this is gonna go into your workflow and Tmux and really keep you focused on the task at hand and keep you from going to that GUI based browser. So thanks for watching and stay tuned for next time.